Good afternoon, everyone. It's Reverend Charles Ulick from Grace Episcopal Church, <laughs> standing here outside in our courtyard. And behind me is our the back of our church on this uh, ninth day of September. Sorry for a little bit of the traffic outside our Broadway church, uh, Broadway uh, of our street, uh, just outside our church here uh, this morning or this afternoon. Today we are celebrating the festival day of Constance and her companions, the martyrs of Memphis during the flu, uh, excuse me, yellow fever epidemic uh, that happened there in the latter part of the 19th century. Let us put ourselves in God's holy presence on this beautiful afternoon to celebrate the lives and legacy of these wonderful women and men. We are on page 103 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 103. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today can be found on page 759, Psalm 116, page 759 in your Book of Common Prayer. We're only going to read a portion of this psalm uh, this afternoon, verses 1 through 8. 1 through 8, page 759. Please join me in reflecting on this beautiful psalm. I love the Lord because He has heard the voice of my supplication, because He has inclined His ear to me, whenever I call upon him. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to, the grief, to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, to, pray you, save my life. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our scriptures continue with a passage from John's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 24 through 28. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came to from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I was saying today on the 9th of September, we are celebrating the festival day, and I mean a festival day to celebrate Sister Constance and three other, four other sisters, and two priests of the Cathedral of St. Mary in Memphis, Tennessee. In August, just this past month, in 1878, yellow fever invaded the city of Memphis once again for a third time in 10 years. Now, that's pretty incredible when you think about it. This epidemic took so many lives that the city charter was disbanded and it took them almost another 40 years or excuse me another 14 years 
to regain the city charter for Memphis, 200 lives were being taken each day during that time of the, that month. Over 25,000 people fled in terror from this uh, terrible epidemic of yellow fever. Sound familiar? What we're going through is a pandemic. Sister Constance of the uh, Cathedral of St. Mary in uh, of the Anglican Church at that time, uh, in 1873, Bishop uh, Quintars uh, requested to, that the uh, girls' school was founded there, and that's what brought Constance there and the other sisters, uh, Thakil, Ruth, and Francis, Reverend Charles Parson, and uh, Reverend Louis Schuyler were uh, fell victim after their aiding the, uh, the people who were sick that were laying in the pews of St. Mary's as also other places throughout the city that were nearby the cathedral. To this day, there is still a monument that is dedicated at the high altar of St. Mary's in honor of these six uh, people who gave their lives. And we listen to the Gospel of John today. And what more can we do for us as, as, as Christians? I mean, think about it. This woman struggled to give of all of herself, not just in religious life as part of her community. And people would say, oh, well, that's what we're here to do as clergy is to sacrifice everything. Well, we're human beings, just like you. We all struggle in faith. We are baptized and our baptismal covenant guided these people and many others, other physicians were also there, to aid those suffering from this terrible fever. I think of our doctors and nurses right now who are battling this pandemic of the coronavirus and people who uh, need to wear our masks when we are in close proximity to people now, they didn't know that mosquitoes were carrying this at that time. It took them a long time to figure it out. But the point is, is that we struggle in faith and we battle things sometimes and we say things that we don't really know what we're really talking about. But what faith does, it draws us in to seeing our brother or sister, whoever we are, people in need. This midday, I can't help but think about the impoverished. I just woke up people sleeping in our playground area who can't find work and are struggling themselves. And family members just like you are watching, we are all struggling. But let's lean into walking with Jesus to help us. This church behind me wasn't built on anything else but faith. Let us be strong in it. Let us help our neighbor. And let us look to these wonderful people, Sister Constance and these priests and her companions of other sisters as an example of Christian neighborly love. Amen. We continue our prayers now on page 103 in your Book of Common Prayer. Or excuse me, page 106. Page 106. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And together, let us strengthen our faith with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer, and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. This is our colic prayer for this day. We give you thanks and praise, O God, for the compassion of the heroic witness of the martyrs of Memphis, who in the time of plague and pestilence were steadfast in their care for the sick and dying, and loved not their own lives, even unto death, 
Inspire in us a like love and commitment to those in need, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. And let us offer our prayers as people of God. If you join me at this time by turning to page 387, Prayers of the People, Form 3, page 387 in your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, for our sisters and brothers of our Christian community, the five churches here in Paducah and downtown where we gather ourselves, the Methodist, Broadway Methodist, First Presbyterian, Washington Street Baptist Church, and St. Francis de Sales Catholic Church. Let us all be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, and women religious, and all those who dedicate their lives to you in spreading the joy of love and neighborliness in the golden rule, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who hold authority in the nations of the world. We pray, our Lord God, for all of our secular leaders. We pray, O oh God, in thanksgiving for uh, democracy and that we may look forward to our elections and we may also guide ourselves in social speech for those running for office. Gear, gear and lend and guide those with office at this time with holy wisdom, especially through this pandemic and rebuilding our economy, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. We especially pray, O Lord, and guide us in loving our neighbor as how I would like to be treated. I pray for all birthdays and anniversaries we celebrate today. We especially pray for the birthdays for Sarah Baker uh, a few days ago and for wedding anniversaries, for St especially for Stacy and Stacy Grimes who celebrated their wedding anniversary on the 7th. We pray in thanksgiving for all those who are celebrating the gift of life and love. We pray for St. Peter's on the lake as well our neighbor, uh, par neighboring Episcopal parish. Uh, we pray, O oh God, that you may watch over all those who are struggling in their faith and strengthen us, especially as we self-isolate and do what we can to lessen the spread of this terrible virus. Lord, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We especially pray for those who are suffering because of the terrible wildfires in California right now and those trapped in those fires and those who are battling those blazes. We pray especially for our, the firefighters. We pray, oh God, for all the, uh, those suffering because of the air pollution that those fires are causing, especially in the state of California, Oregon and, Port, and uh, Washington State. We pray for those still rebuilding from Hurricane Laura uh, in New St. Charles, uh, Louisiana area and throughout the state of Louisiana. We pray, oh God, for those suffering because of the coronavirus and especially the 200 some people who were uh, diagnosed with it yesterday. Uh, not 90 percent of the labs weren't in yesterday, but we pray for all those who are suffering from this terrible virus and especially those who are showing symptoms. Pray for all of our doctors and nurses and all those who are doing what they can to care for those in need, especially those who are hungry as well. We pray for Logan Diesel and my brother-in-law, Doug Haviken, who also have the virus, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. We pray for all those who've passed away today, especially from this terrible pandemic and this coronavirus. We pray for all those who suffered from the uh, yellow fever in the early 1800, 19th century, excuse me. We pray, oh God, for the sacrifice many are doing to care and lend themselves to those in need who have passed away 
And we especially pray for those who are mourning the loss of a loved one today. Let light perpetually shine upon them. May we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Hasten, O Father, the coming of thy kingdom, and grant that thy servants who now live by faith may with joy behold thy Son in his coming in glorious majesty. Hear our prayers. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your only mediator and our advocate. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining me this afternoon. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon and be able to get outside and get some exercise or take a walk, to be able to sit on your porch, whatever it might be, to change it up a little bit for your own spiritual and mental health. Remember, God loves you, and so do I and the people of Grace Episcopal Church in Paducah, Kentucky as well. Have a wonderful afternoon. I hope you can join me this evening at 9 p.m. for Compline Night Prayer. Good day.